so now we're going to move away from graphing the solution sets of inequalities and actually working towards solving an inequality. So when we're graphing, we have the variable on one side, the constant on the other. But if we don't have that case given to us, we need to be able to work there. So we're just going to start looking at this inequality. Is it true? Is 3 less than 7? Yes. And if I add something, the same exact thing to both sides, is that inequality still going to hold true? So let's just say I add 2 to one side, I add 2 to the other. Is this still true? So 5 is less than 9. Still true. Okay, what about if I added a negative? Still going to be true because I'm working with the addition principle. So it's similar for this inequality, x plus 4 less than 10. So I need to add what to this side to get rid of 4? We usually just say subtraction, but I could add a negative to both sides of the same exact value. And what are we going to be left with? So on the left, positive 4 and minus 4, those are going to cancel. We'll be left with x less than 10 minus 4 gives me 6. So are those two equivalent? What we started with and what we ended with? Yeah, they still are those are equivalent. So, to say that x plus 4 is less than 10 and x less than 6 are equivalent is to say that they have the same solution set. So, if I can plug in the same values, anything less than 6 into this one and into that one, it's still going to hold true. Those two are equivalent. So, for any real numbers, a, b, and c, we can add uh, the same thing to both sides of any inequality involved, or subtract, since we can add a negative. And what happens? So when we add or subtract the same number on both sides of an inequality, the direction of the inequality symbol is not changed. It still holds true. The direction of the inequality is unchanged. So, let's work with some. Our goal is to isolate the variable, get the variable on its own, then we'll graph a solution set, see what it looks like. So, that first one. Solve x plus 2 less than 8. Then, eventually, we want to graph on a number line, show the solution set. So, I want x on its own. I need to do what with that 2? Subtract 2 from both sides. So, we get x is less than 6. So, on a number line, what is that going to be looking like? Looking like a new marker, that's what it's looking like. Anything less than 6. So, if my 0 is here, oh, so much better. If my 0 is here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just a rough picture. I want anything that's less than that. So, an open bracket to the left is our solution set. Okay. What about if we have an equation that's a little bit more complicated? So now, second example, a little bit messier than what we've just seen, but concept is still the same. We want to get the x's together and the constants together. So I'm going to go ahead and move 2x to the other side. So I'm going to subtract him to get my x's together. So if I subtract 2x from both sides, I'm looking at 1x left over here and a minus 3 left over there, That's, that sign goes with the constant. And I want this x on its own, so I need to subtract 1. So minus 3, minus 1, x is less than or equal to minus 4. So picture-wise, what is it looking like? Again, short little cheap number line. 1, 2, 3, 4, here's my minus 4. I want anything less than or equal to. So, am I going to have an open or a closed bracket on minus 4? So, I can have the equality case, so it's going to be closed, and it's going to be going in which direction? Anything that's less than or equal to minus 4. Okay. So, what are some of these solutions? What are my options? I could plug in minus 4. Minus 4. Minus 5, minus 6, minus 13 thirds, minus pi. We have a lot of different options. OK. 
Okay, so besides drawing a graph, because that can get tedious sometimes, we can also describe all the solutions of an inequality using set notation. So I can throw it in a set describing this picture, and it means the same thing, but again, we're limited because when I have that set notation, I'm listing elements again. So I'm missing a lot of things in between these numbers and going on for forever. So we can never list them all in that way, but we can use set builder notation. I'm just picking the winners today. So what does that mean? What does that look like? So we have our brackets that say this is the set containing all what? So in this case, we were dealing with x variables. So all the values of x such that x is less than or equal to minus 4. So that encompasses everything that's less than or equal to minus 4. So again, how do we read it? The set of all, so this is the set of all x values, set of all x, such that, that's that line, such that this holds true, whatever is left. So if we're going to read specifically this example, this is the set of all x, such that x is less than or equal to minus 4. Okay, so try. Solve those two different inequalities, graph them, and give me this set builder notation. Give it to me like that as well. Record them in two different ways. Let's go about solving these. What did you have to do? To get x on its own, we need to subtract 4 from both sides. So we get x is greater than 2. Again, quick and dirty graphing. This is 0, this is 2. I have an open bracket going which direction? Open and to the right, since I want anything that's larger than that. With that set builder notation, what are we looking at here? Set containing all x values, since that's the variable we're dealing with, such that x is greater than 2. Those are my solutions to this original inequality statement. What about for b? We need to get our x's together, the constants together. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. It'll leave me with 1 on the left. And I need to subtract 1, so I'm looking at x is less than minus 3. Set builder notation, I'm going to do that one first. All x values, set containing all x values such that x is less than minus 3. I think my green and yellow are too similar, but they both write, so that's good. Again, quick and dirty, minus 3. I'm going to have an open bracket since we can't have exactly equal to 3, and anything going to the left, because I want anything smaller than that. Okay, very last for this little section. The next example, how is it different than what we've seen? Now I have fractions involved. So what's going to have to happen when I'm solving for x? So let's just start off as normal. I need to subtract 1 third from both sides to get x on its own. But to be able to combine these, what do we need? To combine fractions, we need common denominators. So specifically, we want to be working with the least common between 4 and 3, which is what in that case? 12. So what do I have to multiply 4 by to get me to 12? 3. So whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Because in reality, what are we multiplying by? 3 over 3 is 1. Change what it looks like. And to turn 3 into 12, we need to multiply by 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, have to do to the top. So, equivalent, we're looking at 15 twelfths minus 4 twelfths. Now that we have common denominators, we can combine those. So x has to be greater than 11 twelfths. Okay, so you didn't have to draw a picture for that one. But we want to get comfortable with that set notation. So what is the set notation going to look like? Set containing all the x values 
such that x is greater than 11 twelfths.